Day two, same lake, Sullivan County. I wasn't sure if I was gonna come back today, but I did. Got the tent today, it's a little colder. We're getting some weather. Actually, by me and Yonkers, we got even more snow, so it's a bit of a iffy drive up here, but I'm sure it'll all be cleared up by the end of the day. I brought everything with me. It's hard when you have this option in New York of having seven lines in the water at any time to not want to maximize your chances by getting seven lines going. So we're gonna get six tip-ups or whatever around and then I guess I'll jig in the tent for now. So uh, I'm kind of at about the same spot I was yesterday where we didn't have much luck, but I'm thinking maybe this change in the weather might have turned some fish on, I don't know. But anyway, always good to be out. Let's get this thing underway. Well guys, not skunked. Pretty damn nice perch. About a foot, maybe 13 inches. Fat, fat, fat. And why is he sticking his tongue out at us? Well, that's not his tongue. That's because he came out of, I think, over 50 feet of water from the very bottom. And I guess the only way to avoid that is to play them really slowly. And I feel like I played him slow enough. But he'll come home with me. This is, this is going to make a good meal. They do sell things. I remember when I was fishing at Lake of the Woods called, uh, I think they're called fizzers, where you can actually, if you know where to poke it, you can actually relieve that air and supposedly they survive. But we're going to take them home anyway. Um, so this is the spot. So I was setting the jaw jacker. But I noticed something was immediately coming up to, um, I just had a wax worm on a jig head that was going down. I immediately noticed something coming up. So I said, I'm just going to play this fish. And I immediately had a bite. So I actually, this hole, I might actually just end up jigging at since I know there's stuff down there. And I'll just set up the rest of my tip ups now. That's awesome. I'm going to put this in the tent though, because there's birds. There's even um, a bald eagle that supposedly lives up there that will uh, come and steal your food. So cool. I might have a friend coming later. We might cook it up on the ice. I don't know. All I've got is a pot though, and we gotta cook tea in that. Okay, let's do the EKG main method. So we find the brain right behind the eyes, brain spike, render him brain dead, slit the gills. Gosh, this isn't sharp. We're gonna make a small that's just nerves, folks. Small incision near the tail. Not all the way through, but we gotta find the spinal cord. Found it. Put in the old circuit breaker. Right down that hole. It should go all the way down. Yep, I'm just gonna jimmy it around. This is actually the best I've ever done this. Get all the nerves to stop firing. Again, you might not like it, but this is the most humane way to kill a fish and gives you better quality meat. Now we'll finish gutting it. Got some nice eggs in there, got some poop. Look at that skein. Love that word. Look at that skein. And we'll just pop this for good measure. Alright, that's a nice big old perch. Do we have, do we have enough battery? That's the question. Running low, running low. Do we have a fish? Is the other question. I don't think so. Ah, always nice to have the safe confines of the shelter. And it is kind of chilly today and windy and snowing, flurries at least. So yeah, nice to have this option to warm up. Although I know that hole where I caught the perch, there's more fish down there. Uh, I got a couple more follows, but nothing else. But at least I can be comfortable when I need to be. It's going to be a good day, right? Oh, shit. This flags went up. Damn. No, nothing. 
push the push the minnow though. On guys, we got a fish on coming from all the way down. Probably a perch, but we shall see. Just need to make sure we don't mess up at the hole here. It's a nice big poich. Not as big as the last one, but another decent perch. Another one who's uh, coming from so deep that uh, he's got that bladder, that air bladder problem. So we'll keep him. All right, I'm gonna go dispatch him the Ikajime way. All right, fish. You can always count on perch. We'd like some walleye, we'd like some lake trout, but not getting skunked is good as well. All right, I'm thinking of calling some fish in with a lot of vibration, with a blade bait, tipped, of course, with a minnow head, but Let's just double check the dinner bell before we do that. Another fish on, guys. Sorry about this view. There you go. Perch, I think, right from the bottom. It's crazy taking them out of like 50, I think it's 54 feet of water. Yep. It's another. And another. With a bladder condition. Air bladder, that is. We'll take him too. Here we go. We'll get one at the right angle this time. Here he comes. He's gonna bite. Are you kidding me? Don't give up. Nothing. Nothing. Okay guys, I was just outside trying to jig for a while. Lost the fish on a flag. So I'm pretty chilly now. And you know what that means. It's tea time. Today, we're gonna go with another green tea. And I felt kind of bad last time because I feel like I didn't give green tea the recognition it deserves. And I said that something about how all green tea is kind of you know, it's just green tea. There's there's nothing distinctive. I have one that's distinctive. It's a pan-fired green tea. Let me show it to you. So this is pan-fired green tea. And it does have a very different flavor. So I'm going to boil the water and taste it for you. It steeps for, green tea doesn't steep for long. Uh, I think two to three minutes. I always go on the higher side. So three, maybe even four minutes, but yeah. Okay, we boiling. This heat shield is key. Ow! Even in the shed because the wind gets underneath if I don't put snow around it. Give it three, maybe four minutes. Pan-fired green tea. Okay, before I run out of camera batteries, let's taste the pan-fired green tea. Now, what does pan-fired mean exactly? I'm not sure, but I would assume it means they take the tea leaves and fry them, or fire them, in a pan. Now, this has some elements of your traditional green tea, that kind of very, um, I don't know, like plant-like quality, but instead of just like dried plant, this is like toasted plant, and I might even say like toasted oats. There's almost a, like a Cheerio flavor to it, but it has a very like, I don't, for some reason like the word velvety or waxy, and I know those two words don't really uh, mix in in you know the common vernacular but velvety and waxy and toasty toasted oats 
So if, if, you, if you think there's no nuance of flavor in green tea, you gotta try pan-fired green tea. And I think there's another name for it, like Singlo or something. I, if there is, I'll put it in the subtitles, but, and I'll link this tea in the description. Yeah, pan-fired green tea. It actually turned out to be a very cold day, so this is excellent. We had the buddy heater going in here most, most of the day. Uh, and you know what? I might as well film the outro. Another slow day out here in Sullivan County, but I'm glad I got on the board. I'm going to go home with three perch. That's always good. Maybe we'll do something fun with them in a future in a future video. Uh, two full days at this same lake and uh, only some perch to show for it. So a little disappointed that I didn't get the walleye and the, and the lake trout. You know, it just leaves me hungry for more. And uh, I may even... Uh, now ice permitting be traveling to somewhere known for lake trout in the near future So I got to get home the Super Bowls tonight So I'm gonna pack up a little earlier than usual hope you guys are having a good time on the ice a safe time on the ice But if not, I hope you're just enjoying these videos and if you haven't yet, please subscribe Please like and as always fish like no one's watching peace